Hey Sparkles, what's up? Today's video will be super challenging because I will be working on a dragon BJD. Dragatar reached out to me to send them one of their Salvador dragon BJDs to customize and show to you guys. And I also want to introduce you to their Dragons of the World art contest. More on that later. Dragatar also sent a doll to Mr. Super Customs and Josephine Screeches. So what better opportunity to team up for a collab? Make sure to check out my friends' videos too after this video. Also make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment for the algorithm, you know the drill. But yeah, the procrastination was strong on this doll, so let's get started. Okay, so here's the gorgeous box the little Salvador dragon comes in. It has gold plating on it and I just love how it shimmers. Let's open it up and see what's all inside. First, we have this little envelope with a sticker seal. Inside, we have a little description of the company and on the back side, we have a little description of the doll itself. Salvador is a dragon BJD that is designed to be customized, painted, dyed, bedazzled, etc. The dragon also comes with a certificate of authenticity. When buying a doll, you should always pay attention to these certificates, as sadly there are a buckload of counterfeit dolls out there, especially on AliExpress and websites like that. So-called recasts really harm small businesses and artists, so please do not buy these. The box also had some restringing materials and replacement parts in case you might break something. Let's finally see the dragon. I love that it comes in this little cushion, which protects it well during transportation. Ah, oh, this is so nice with this pillow. Ooh, it's so tiny. Oh my god, this is so cute. I love this little pillow. Let's take off the protective sleeves and foil. He's sleeping. Look, oh, he's so light. Salvador is made of nylon, which makes him very lightweight. I was surprised because I'm used to resin, which is significantly heavier. And here he is before the big transformation. It's such a cute doll and I actually love the uncustomized version as well as a minimal decoration. But this isn't what the video is about, so let's get working on him. The first step to the customization process will be to unstring this doll. I was a bit afraid of doing that because there are a lot of pieces, but here we go. This is actually the perfect time to introduce you to the Dragons of the World contest hosted by Dragatar. It is Dragatar's second art event and you can participate by creating your own dragon. This year they ask you to create your own Tulitar dragon, which is the new dragon from them. The first stage of the contest is to design your dragon and in the second stage anyone who owns a Dragatar doll can customize their Salvador dragon doll just like I will be doing today. In the painting stage there will be five prizes including two Tulita dolls that will be sent to the winners and three discount codes. Second stage contestants can win a customized Salvador and Tulita doll by the owner of the company, a blank Tulita doll or Petal Wings plus 20% discount on the shop. You have time until the 29th of May to make your entry. More information are on the Dragata website. Link is in the description box below. Alright, I have unstrung the doll as far as I dare for now and we can start the customizing process. First, I will be using some pastels to give the body some orange shading. I want to make an ocean dragon that will be inspired by a lionfish. I will spice up the color palette a little bit though and mainly add the orange shading around the jointed parts of the dragon. I make sure the shaded parts go well together before continuing. This process took quite a while because I wanted to make sure to blend the shading as nice as I could to make a soft gradient to white. I actually didn't need to spray the doll with MSC before but I did seal it afterwards. After sealing, it's time to add the stripes and spots on the doll. I will be using a pink pencil to first sketch out the lines and then take my pink Posca marker to fill them in. I used the Posca because it has the prettiest pink from all the paints that I own and it also handled very well on the surface of the doll. Let's speed up the process a little. And boom! The body has been painted and it looks so much better than I thought. Wow! I also added a bit of shimmer before sealing the body a second time. And here you can see I also painted all the legs, which really took forever, but it was so worth the effort. I will now already string back together the legs onto the doll because I didn't want any excess body parts flying around. 
To string the doll, I used the stringing guide video from Jagatar that they kindly provide on their YouTube channel. It was super helpful and made the stringing a lot easier. Front legs are done, let's do the same with the back legs. While I was waiting for Pixie to do some sculpting magic, I'm going to sculpt some fins by hand. I'll be using cos clay for that because it stays elastic after baking and I thought that was a great feature. To prevent dirt from picking up on the clay, I will use gloves to first make it soft for sculpting. Then I'm rolling a sausage and will then use an acrylic sheet to roll it out smoothly to an evenly shaped sausage that becomes thinner towards the end. Then I shape the tip of the sausage to be pointier and cut the length that I need. I make a couple of these cones like that for the spine fins and bake them for 30 minutes in my mini oven at 135 degrees Celsius. And yeah, after baking, look how flexible they are. It's so cool! Now it's time to paint them before we add the fin parts. I again use my Posca marker in pink for that and spread the color all over. Then I'm using some purple paint to create three stripes on the cone part. I then glued the cone in a little bow to a taped surface. I mixed some UV resin with blue pigment and will now add it to the cone, creating a little fin shape. This was extremely soothing to do, actually. I'm adding the fin part on top and on the bottom of the cone and when I was happy, I will cure it under the UV lamp for a couple minutes. After curing, I then can peel off the tape and will clean the back of the fin with some acetone before glossing it with some top coat and curing it again. It looks so nice! Now I just cut off the end and one fin is done! Five more to go for the spine! And then I had to make a bunch more cones for the end tail fin, which will be a big one. I prepared all the cones and glued them onto a tape that I put on top of a little sketch I did and printed in original size and will now add the blue UV resin to all the gaps. This took quite a while and it was kind of nerve-wracking because I wasn't sure if the fin would stay in one piece when removing it from the tape after curing. So here's the fin after curing and my fear became reality. Patrick, the lid's already off. Oh, now it's my turn. Okay, so this broke while I was peeling it off, as you might have seen in the clip before, and I was swearing a lot. I managed to repair it now, and uh, it should fit the tail piece, but I will only put it on when the tail is strung and painted. So, as you can see, I made quite a lot of fins in the end, but I'm so happy it worked out. There was only one tiny little thing left to do on the tail fins. I wanted to add some golden dots for some extra detailing because I thought it would look cool, so I did that with my liquid gold paint. And yeah, here you can see the dragon body with the legs so far. It looks so so cool, but I can't wait to see it with tail, neck, head, wings and fins. Let's string the tail. I already shaded, painted and thread the elastic through the tail end and will now string it in the right order. I'm threading it through one elastic cord first and then use a wire to thread in the second part. Alright, now that the tail is strung together, I will add the spots on the rest of the tail because I found it easier to do these parts when they are already strung together. I will again just sketch out all the shapes and fill them in with my Posca marker. Nice! And then it's time to join the tail and the body. It's coming together! Ah! Alright, time for some 3D printing. As mentioned earlier, Blue Pixie did some magic for this again and transformed my sketch into a sculpted little head with eye sockets for inset eyes and some fins that I want to add to the neck and head. I will be printing the stuff on my Elego Mars 3 printer in light blue clear resin. It printed perfectly and is now just curing under some UV light. Oh my god, look at this little head sculpt. Blue Pixie really outdid herself again with the sculpting job. To match the body, I will however need to spray paint the head white, but mask off the end of the head fins as I wanted them to stay transparent. 
After the little head was dry, I can finally start painting it. I'll first add some pink blushing to the nose and some orange shading to the end of the head. After I was satisfied with the shading, I then go in with paint and will paint the lower fins purple. Oh, sorry. I already painted one side and will try to match the other side of the head, so I will first go in with some pink again. I use the Posca first and then spread the paint on the thinner parts with a brush. After the pink parts, I also add some orange parts for a smoother transition. With some stripes and shimmers added to the face, the head is done and it looks so pretty. Now all that is left is to make the fin parts more transparent, which I'm able to do by adding some UV top coat to the outside and inside of the fins. After curing, they almost look like glass and I love that so so much. Now all that is left are some golden dots like I did on the tail fins. With some tiny iridescent rhinestones the head is done and we can make the dragon some eyes now. I'll be using my half sphere mold again and will use the 1 cm sphere mold. I'll take some iridescent flakes and add them to the mold first. Then I drip some purple clear UV resin into the mold with a toothpick and fill it up about halfway through. I cure it for 2 minutes and then add some black UV resin and fill up the mold completely. After curing it's time to demold! Oh, it's really pretty! Almost looks like a gemstone! I now just made the second one and will use some blue tack to add the eyes to the head. Wow, they are perfect. I love how shimmery they are. Finally, time to paint the head fins. I will just add some purple stripes to them with my Posca in lilac and then gloss them over with UV top coat as well. And then I will just be super gluing the fins to the three little holes on the top of the head. Okay, I'm in love with this head. Wow, he's so tiny and cute. I however still need to paint the spots on the neck that I already strung off cam, so let's do that real quick with a finger snap. You gotta love video editing. Okay, the last big thing to make are the wings. The Pixie also sculpted these big boys and I printed them on my 3D printer in clear blue. The print took about 10 hours, but holy moly, look at these beauties. Now I just need to remove them from the print plate and clean them up. Before painting them, I will need to cut off the ends to the original wings with my Dremel so that they look like this. And then I will dye them. After that was done, I'm going to glue them into the wings with some UV resin. They fit into the gaps pretty snug, which is good, and just need to be secured with some resin. After curing, they definitely won't go anywhere and I can now paint the wings. I sketched out some lines with a pencil first and then go in with my purple Posca to fill the shapes in. The purple is such a beautiful color combination with the blue and it was fun drawing on the shapes and filling them in. I essentially just added pink and shimmers after the purple. And now it's time to make them clear. I will use this non-vibe UV top coat because it cures completely sticky free. Applying the coat took a while because I needed quite a lot. After applying the coat to front and back side of the wings and curing it, it looks incredible though. And now I will just finish up the wings with some iridescent rhinestones. I'm applying some white PVA glue to the parts where I want the rhinestones to be and then just apply them. And after drying and adding some final golden details, the wings look like this and they are ready to be strung together. I tried to use some S-hooks and a thicker elastic cord here, which in the end actually didn't work out, so I stuck with the initial thickness of the cord. I did the stringing off cam though, because it was far from easy to do, but hey, it looks awesome, so now it's just the neck that's missing. And here we go! Oh my god, the doll is really coming together! It's now finally time to add all the little fins, all the little fins. <laughs> I'm starting by adding all the fins that I made for the leg. Starting by adding... <laughs> What's the sentence? <laughs> I finally... Um, I'm starting by adding the fins that I made for the legs. Yeah, 
I'm starting by adding the fins to the... Oh god. I'm starting by adding the fins that I made for the legs first. I just super glue them on where I want them to be. The tail fin was a bit trickier, so I used some hot glue to make it fit snug. Then I'm adding all the remaining fins to the tail. And finally, I will be dazzled the tail fin and the legs with some more iridescent rhinestones. After all, everything is better with glitter and rhinestones and it almost looks like glistening water drops. And also, I love bedazzling. <laughs> okay, the dragon is technically done. Am I done working on this project though? No, because I always need to be extra and I decided to make a little display environment for the dragon. I asked my dad to cut out a wooden oval shape from some wood that I will use as a base. Before I paint the plate, however, I will make some splashing water. For that, I will crumble a plastic bag first and then add UV resin to the crumbled shape. After I was satisfied with the shape and the amount of resin, I will then put the crumbly mess into my UV lamp and cure it for a couple minutes. After it was cured, I can just peel it off the plastic bag. I do that slowly and carefully and end up with this. It really looks like splashing water. I then just went on and made a couple of these water splashes and painted some of them with some blue acrylic ink because that ink stays clear after drying. Alright, time to paint the display plate. I decided to paint it black because I felt it would be a great contrast to all the colorful things that I want to add. I can now add these colorful synthetic aquarium plants that I got on Amazon. I unpack them and first arrange them to my liking on the plate. And after I knew how I wanted to place them, I take my trusty hot glue gun and glue the plants onto the plate. This was so satisfying to do. I actually really loved building this little environment for the doll and I kind of want to do more things like that. After all the plants I wanted to add had been glued down, I then went on to glue some shells and rocks onto the gaps in between the plants that my family actually was so kind and brought for me from the one day they went to the Baltic Sea where I couldn't come along. So here's the sand that my family brought me with some shells and stones in it and uh, yeah, it's so nice. To add the sand I just mixed it with some PVA glue and will now apply it on the plate. It was so soothing to glue all the pieces on the plate and to build that little ocean environment. And finally for the finishing touches I will add the splashing water and glue it in place with a hot glue gun as well. And with that I only need to paint the remaining edges black and the display plate and doll are finally done. I'm so excited to see it all together. You too? And yeah, that's my Salvador Dragon BJD. This was such a cool and challenging and new project for me and I really hope you enjoyed it as well. Make sure to check out my friends' videos as well. Their dragons are just amazing. And as always, thank you to all my patrons and Twitch subscribers. You guys are the very, very best. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video and have a beautiful creative day.
Bye. Oh my gosh, come on here. Wait, let me. Oh, <laughs> look at this. I love you so much. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay.